Hi guys, I hope you all are well and had a fabulous Mother's Day weekend. Um, I had a lovely weekend. Uh, it was bittersweet, uh, but lovely no nonetheless. Um, you know, it's been kind of a hard couple weeks for me, emotionally and mentally. That's why I haven't really been blogging. Um, so, you know, I know I've shared with you guys a couple blogs past about the story of Ryan Cruz Saldana, the little boy that, that died tragically in an accident. Uh, and I've shared with you guys how hard that hit me. And um, as Mother's Day came around, it really, really brought up a lot of, you know, unresolved issues or just old, it reopened old wounds, you know. So I had to make sure that I dealt with that. And uh, it was also important for me to um, celebrate Mother's Day um, according to how I was feeling. Um, you know, I myself have uh, experienced loss of a child and it's a little bit different because, you know, I miscarried when I was still pregnant. I've never had a child and have him be gone. I don't know the difference. I pray I never will, but I mean, it's hard. I don't want to take away from anybody. I know it hurts me when somebody takes away from me. Like they make it seem like, oh well, it's okay because he wasn't even born yet. But it's not okay. And for those people who have gone through it, you know, they understand. Uh, but I think unless you've gone through it, you won't, you don't really understand that part. But, um, so, I don't want to jump to, you know, my story, but, um, so this Mother's Day, it was very important for me to celebrate Ryan, and not only Ryan, but any other little, you know, being or any mothers that have lost a child. And so, you know, we celebrated life this Mother's Day with my little family. And we sent off some red balloons for Brian ourselves. And we just remember him and prayed for him and prayed for his mom and dad and his family and his loved ones and anybody who had been affected for him because you know, it's very important for us to to be there for one another. And so I was having a hard time, you know, even starting this blog because I wasn't sure how much I wanted to share because it's such a delicate, you know, intimate subject. But part of why I started this blog is to, you know, uh, create this virtual community for people like myself who don't really have other people to turn to or support or you know, things of that nature. So, um, I've decided to share a little bit of our story, of my story. And, uh, so, I'm gonna try to make it as short and to the point as possible. Um, so, my husband and I got together in um, 2004. And, we got married in 2006. Uh, we weren't really trying at the time, but um, 
you know, we were just like, we were newlyweds and we were like, whatever happens, happens. Even though we both knew when we went into the marriage that we wanted a family, we were just letting, you know, things happen on their own. So in 2007, I got pregnant and I was due on January of 2008. But unfortunately, at 12 weeks, I miscarried, like I mentioned earlier. And I don't think that I've had a harder day in my life other than my mom passing away that I can, you know, kind of compare to that type of pain. Like, just your heart has been ripped out of yourself, like physically ripped out of your body and has been crushed and you're in so much pain, like, I don't even know how to explain it. I mean. I'm pretty sure if any of you guys suffer any type of loss, you understand. But so that was really, really hard. And at that time, I really didn't have the right support system around me because, you know, you have the people that mean well and pat you in the back and say, oh, it's okay, everything's going to be okay, you're young, it's fine, it happens, you know, you'll try again which I appreciate and I understand, but I feel like it kind of takes away from what you have lost or from the little being that to me is a person and from my pain, like it belittles it or, you know, it just, and I know they mean well, but I wish some people would have not said anything and just like hug me. You know, I really just needed like hugs. I didn't really need any advice or any words because there's really nothing anybody can say at a moment like that. You know, I mean, the moment that you see a plus sign on that pregnancy test, you're a mom. To me, I'm a mom. I think my husband became a father when he saw his son being born. But I feel that I became a mom the minute I saw that plus sign on the stick, you know, and like changed everything. My heart just opened and it filled with dreams and hopes and, you know, I was picking names. I was daydreaming of what it was going to look like, what it was going to be. And so when the doctor tells you there's no heartbeat, it's devastating and you know people need to honor that it was a life that's no longer there it doesn't matter you know how old it was and your pain is just as real so you know like I said we were devastated and at that moment I realized I want to be a mom like that became my mission like I want to be a mom I want to be a mom I need to be a mom I want this this is what I want <laughs> I, I want to be a mom like to love something that you never really got to know so much it was just beyond me so from that moment on we started like trying 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 to have a baby you know well after and they tell you to rest yourself and then you can try again so we did we actively started trying and um, you know 2008 passed by 2009 passed by 2010 passed by 2011 and nothing was happening um, I would go to doctors and they told me that everything was fine you know when that happened to me they told me that nothing was wrong with me that it was more common that that you um, knew about. There was, I think the doctor said something like three out of five people go through it. And I mean, I didn't do anything to cause it. And the doctors said there was nothing wrong with my body or my insides. So, you know, they said that it was like nature's way or I heard a lot of things. But so the doctor said there was nothing wrong with me. And um, 
you know, we kept trying and we kept trying and trying and positions and the times of day and, you know, I mean, you name it. Um, we didn't get into any fertility treatments because, to be honest, I, we couldn't really afford that, you know. So we just tried, like, pills and beverages and whatever people suggested. We tried it and nothing was happening. Uh, in the summer of 2011, a friend of mine came to me and told me that a couple of friends at her job that had also been, you know, trying to get pregnant and were not being successful, uh, found this uh, found a woman that massaged them, massaged their womb. We call them sobadoras in Spanish, and it's basically, you know, these women that massage you. They're not really, you know, certified or anything. Uh, they didn't really went to school. It's just something that has been passed down from generation to generation to them. And, um, you know, so I had two testimonies of somebody, of people that have gone with this one person and I work for them. And they do all sorts of massages, not just that, but like any type of ailment, upset stomachs, sore muscles, pull muscles, like you name it, they can fix it, right? And so I've heard of stuff like that, you know, I, when I was younger, my aunt, um, we would do that for my friends. We were dancers and they would come home from school really torn up and sore and she would like make them all better. But, um, so yeah, you know, they told me about this woman uh, and I figured, what do I have to lose, right? So I visited her, um, I believe it was August and, or, or July, but anyways, um, I visited her, I, I didn't, I told her, I didn't tell her what had happened to me, but I told her that I was there because I wanted to get pregnant, and as she started working on me, she herself started asking questions and asking me if I had miscarried recently because, you know, my body was showing signs and, you know, the miscarriage left my body a certain way that it was kind of making it hard for it to get pregnant again. I guess like miscarriages are like labors almost and so you open up like to release it and I wasn't close right and um, so she closed me right up and you know she worked on my front and the doctors had told me that there was nothing wrong with me that my uterus was a little tilted but there was nothing wrong like that wouldn't matter but she told me that my uterus was not tilted that it was flipped like flipped over at the time I was doing nursing and I was picking up really you know I was doing heavy lifting picking up heavy patients and machinery and stuff um, so she told me it's not tilted it's flipped and you know she told me to pay attention and I could hear like when she like put everything back into place and I was like wow and you know to be honest at the end of the session I started crying because of the way she was talking to me and just her hands she was very gentle nothing hurt but the way her hands felt on me I felt like if it was my mother working on me like my mom's hands I don't I can't explain it but I felt like this peace, like I felt like God was working through her. And, you know, I started crying, like it, this feeling came over me and I just started crying. I just released whatever I needed to release. And uh, she massaged me two more times. She told me to drink some rosemary, like a tea, because it's like an anti-inflammatory and it would clean you out and warm up your uterus and to wear like a tight little um, faja, you know, like a tight little underwear to keep you in place and not to pick up any heavy things or go down flights of stairs, you know, too much or anything like that. And she said, if you do, then try to back walk backwards. And believe me, I did. People would look at me like, what is she doing? Well, I'm like, 
I'm handling this. <laughs> so, you know, um, I saw her two more times after that. So three total. She charged me $10 per session, uh, which I thought was a steal. Like, really? $10? So if I had 15 or 20 on me, that's what I would give her. You know, I wish I could give her more. But, um, so yeah, you know, the next month, um, I got like a really, really heavy period and I like noticed the difference because I've never really had problems with my periods. I've always been like on time and um, they're always there every m a month and like a year prior to the massage, I've noticed like being late and not really coming like as they should, you know, like more like brown instead of red. And, you know, ladies, I'm sorry if this is getting like TMI, but ladies, you understand. And I need to share this with you so if you're going through this, you know, you can kind of know and relate, right? So, um, yeah, so I write the massage, right after the massage, when she um, she did it, I noticed like a really heavy, like, like she opened me, like, it was like just heavy and it was painful and like everything was coming out. But it was like healthy and red and a lot and you know I was like hallelujah <laughs> and uh, so yeah and so that one month and then right after that you know, I counted the 14 days and when you're supposed to be ovulating and we just tried we tried you know like the whole week of you know starting fertility to where actual ovulation day so um I mean, we just had fun trying <laughs> and uh, um you know a month later not even a month later but a little less than a month later when my period was late it was only late one day or two days and i took a test and i told myself don't take this test because if it's negative, you're gonna really be bummed out and you need to wait a little longer to make sure the hormones levels are right and blah, blah, blah. Like, I was so anxious that I just took it anyways. And I remember being at a party at a cousin's uh, birthday party for her daughter. And I went to the bathroom and I took this test. And um, it was the first time that I ever used that EPT that or no, 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 the clear blue, the one that actually said like the word pregnant or not pregnant. And um, so, you know, I, I went to the bathroom at her house <laughs> and I took the test and I put it down, I washed my hands and, you know, waiting for the time to pass by, longest two minutes of my life. And I looked at it and I said, pregnant. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? Like, I don't know. I rubbed my eyes. Like, I looked at it and I flipped it. And I was like, seriously? Like, I couldn't believe it, right? After all those years trying, one month after this woman massages me, I'm pregnant. So, I went out and I was, I was planning to not say anything till I got home or like take my husband aside and say something but emotion got the best of me and like he looked at me when I came out and he asked if everything was okay and I had like the biggest smile on my face and you know there was people around family members around the table and I'm like and he's like okay are you, what's going on are you okay and I just like flung the thing at him <laughs> And it was all history after that, like. And I'm kind of glad I did it. It was a very joyous moment for all of us, especially after what had happened. You know, everybody who was there got to share. Like, they didn't even need to, for me to say it. Like, people just knew. People, like, started hugging me and getting up on tables. And it was just a wonderful thing. And mind you, it could be dangerous because if things don't work out, then it's also painful to have to tell everybody again that things didn't work out again. But 
thankfully that was not our case you know almost 10 months later my boy was born and uh or nine months later and he was healthy and uh, i couldn't have asked for anything more <laughs> So, you know, I didn't believe that massages could work like that, but after that, I mean, I'm a believer. And um, so we had our son, and um, we decided, you know, that we should just enjoy the baby and enjoy him and him being a baby. And then we could start trying again, which I kind of regret right now because knowing the history and knowing how hard it is for us to conceive, I really should have not waited any time. Should have just, you know, let things be. But it is what it is. So, you know, time flew by. Time flew by and he turned one. And before we knew it, I told my husband, when we supposed to start trying when he was turning one? He's not one and a half, and so we started trying last August, and nothing's happened. Um, what's happening is my period gets all out of whack. Like, you know, my period could be like good, and then the minute we start trying, I'm like late a week, a few days, like, and it's starting to be like. Um, not as healthy of a period as it should be, you know. So, I don't know. It's been kind of weird. So, that's been kind of frustrating for us. And so, I wasn't going to have any interventions again to see if I had my son already by myself, then I should be fine, right? But, so, we started trying last August. And nothing, 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 nothing. So, a couple months ago, I figured, well, nothing's happening again, let me call my lady, you know, the massage lady. Um, but uh, a friend of mine had asked me for her number before, like a month before, to, um, no, a few months before, to get in, in contact with her because she also had been trying to get pregnant and she couldn't, she was having a little trouble, but she herself has another little girl, um, like older little girl. So um, she's been trying, and so I gave her the number, 
and she called me back and told me it's disconnected you know so I was like oh no okay but I figured well if anything I could always drive down there and you know see what's going on so back to a few months ago um, I couldn't get a hold of her and I'm like well now what am I gonna do and my friend you know um, got pregnant and I asked her what you do you know and she told me I found somebody to massage me you know her some acquaintance of hers um, that does it and she did it and it worked for her so I was like great give me her number <laughs> so I did I called a couple months ago and I got massaged and a really sweet lady you know um, I didn't really tell her that I had gotten massaged before because I wanted her to do like her own thing I didn't want her to ask questions or tell me what the other lady had done like I just wanted her to do what she does and um, and she told me that everything was fine you know that one of the ovaries was a little tilted but you fixed it and then my uterus is healthy and my uterus is ready to go and so she did that um, and again I had a healthy period the month after that last month and you know we started trying right after that and I was supposed to get my period on April 28th and um, I didn't get it I didn't get it you know 29 30 31 I think or you know May started first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh like all these days and um there's no period so i'm getting really excited i'm thinking i'm pregnant it worked again hallelujah you know it's a miracle <laughs> like i'm gonna swear by this ladies and um i started taking tests at home and they were negative they're negative 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 and we went to the doctor and it was negative and I said, okay, I understand it's negative, but then where's my period? Because we're now on May 13th, or May 12th, and nothing it was Mother's Day. Uh, or May 11th was Mother's Day, right? Yeah, May 11th, and then May 12th, and nothing. So I was like, okay, um, so what's going on? And I started freaking out, and I know... And I'm not supposed to stress about it, it makes things worse, but really, how can you not? <laughs> and, you know, especially because I have friends that have, I have one friend that has gone through early menopause, and I have another friend that has other issues that make it harder for her to have, like, um, a regular, if any, you know, period, and it makes it harder for her to get pregnant. And, so I started freaking out because I'm thinking there's something wrong, there's something wrong. If I'm not pregnant, then there's something wrong. And, you know, thankfully, May 13th, Aunt Flo came to town and with a vengeance, like, Phew. So, I don't know. I don't know, it's just like, it's been hard. It's been hard because as you know, lucky and blessed that I am to have my son, Gabriel. It also, you know, just, there's a longing there. There's a, not because it's not enough, but because I want to give him that. I want to give him a family that is not just him, you know, and, and us. Like, I was an only child and I, I didn't like it. I hated it. I always wish for siblings. So I want to give him that. I want to give him a brother or a sister and someone, you know, to be his partner in crime, somebody that he can play with. Um, you know, and it's not that we're not open to other avenues. It's not that we're not open to adoption. I mean, that's something that my husband and I spoke about even before Gabrielito was born, like what if we can't have children, you know, and we both agreed that that's something that we were, 
you know, very open to do. You know, I've shared with you in a past blog that I myself am adopted, so that would be the dream that I could give somebody else the chance that was given to me of a life, of a loving life, of a loving, you know, family or a loving mother. Um, so we would totally be open to that. But, you know, the reality is the way the system works, um, they just don't hand you a kid, you know, like you have to have a certain amount of money in the bank and you have to own a home and they have to have their own room and, you know, there's a lot of things that you need to um, cross before you're even eligible for that and, um, you know, just, that's not a something that we can do at this time like we just <laughs> it's harder for you to adopt than to have your own you know like we don't have riches but we're making it work and my son is provided for there's nothing that he needs that you know we can't provide but when you bring the system into it then they see it much differently and uh, but you never know I mean, my mother was given that gift, you know, without her even knowing one day she was, you know, made a mom, <laughs> just like that. So it could happen, it could happen to us, and we're open and we pray for that too. But um, if I'm able to have another one of my own, then, you know, <laughs> that'd be totally cool too, like, just, I know that God knows what's in my heart, and I know that I have faith in Him and that He provides. And, um, you know, we'll just see, we'll just pray and see, and it's just hard. It's hard and painful, and it could be a very lonely road. I mean, I feel blessed, I feel blessed every day. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And when I look at my son, I know he's a miracle. And I believe God exists because of him. But, you know, there's still a longing there. There's still an emptiness. I don't know how to explain it. Um, you know, I always think my other son or daughter could have been six years old, you know, I would have had a six year old uh, son or daughter and Gabrielito, you know, like, I always think like that, like, and I really try not to torture myself, but sometimes you just can't help it. You look at other kids that can, around the same age, and it just, you know, reminds you of, you know, <laughs> what you've gone through, what you could have had, and you know, I know you're not supposed to covet anything that's not yours, but you know, I look at other moms that got a bunch of kids, or they have a a six-year-old and a four-year-old and a two-year-old, or a four-year-old and a two-year-old and a two-month-old, and I wish that could be us. You know, I wish it could be so easy for us, and I don't know their story. So I, I shouldn't assume anything. I don't know if they've had problems or what they went through to get to it. But it seems like other families is just like, just think about it and they make it happen, you know? So, you know, but this is our story. It's hard and like I said, that's, um, the reason why I'm blogging about it and reaching out because I want anybody to know like if you're going through something similar or you know you feel alone you're not alone and I'm here if you have any questions or comments or advice that you can give me or anything you know let me have it, you know, comment below and uh, I'll try to respond and um, I don't know.
just taking it one day at a time right now. But I just wanted to share with you guys where I was at. So I'll leave you guys with that. I hope that it's been a little helpful and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be such a long vlog, but I guess there's no way of making it any shorter. Um, if you guys only knew, you know, half the stuff that's still in my head that I wish I could share regarding this topic right now. It would be like another hour blog, but we can't do that. So, um, just thank you for listening and thank you for watching. And, um, take care. Until next time. Love you guys.